quiet. All right. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing today? Woo! Good morning. We have coffee in our blood. It's great. Uh, so I'm here to talk about smooth criminals. Smooth criminals being animations in Android. They can actually cost you a lot. They can actually cause you a lot of performance problems. But it's one of the things that really makes a buttery, awesome app. So I'm going to start talking about a few kind of open libraries that are very common and uh, you should actually know about uh, as we kind of get into this. And then we're going to talk about some of the stuff that's a little bit more uh, Android platform specific. So one of the things I want to talk about here is Lottie. What is Lottie? Lottie is actually a program that allows you to take a, an Adobe After Effects animation. So you get a lot of those from your designers and basically just plop it down in and you end up with actually natively running code for iOS, Android, and React Native. It's super simple. There's no dev work. It actually draws using Android Canvas, uh, which is kind of sophisticated. Uh, and it handles some really complicated to do animations quite easily. So if you have something like what they're actually showing here in the Lottie image right here, uh, that would be super painful to try and do by hand, right? To do all that animation in Canvas, write it out, make sure that it flows nicely. If they want to change timing on something, it's usually a really big pain to do. So that's really great for Lottie. And a little bit of a bonus here, uh, you can see a lot of free, ready-to-go uh, Lottie animations at this website here. So what are some problems with it? So what you will notice is there can be some serious performance issues. Um, I've done a lot of work, especially more recently, in taking uh, Lottie and actually remaking those as uh, full handwritten uh, animations. And it's because the performance just wasn't there. Uh, so if you're doing something that's really complicated, it really sometimes messes that up. If it's going to be something that's full screen, if you need it to run on low-end devices as well as high-end, if you need it to be full screen, if you have it so that it's doing it repeatedly over and over again, there, there's some performance problems there, especially if it's going to be animating with other animations on the same screen. So just be aware it's not an end-all, be-all. Uh, but it is really great for getting out prototypes or if you really need to get something out the door quickly. Kyrie, so this is a relatively new one. It started around March of this year. It's, I'm putting alternative in quotations here because animated vector drawables, uh, it's actually using a subset of vector drawables and uh, animated vector drawables to accomplish this. Uh, but Basically, it addresses some major issues that you might have come across uh, with animated vector drawables. Basically, you can dynamically create in a vector drawable at runtime, which is amazing, uh, and animated vector drawables. And you can actually declare things about that animation in your in programmatically, right? So normally, we'd have to do that as part of the XML file. We would have to do some weird transforms on it. It's not worth it. Just use Kyrie. <laughs> And uh, this way, you can also do uh, definitions of vector pathing so that you could actually get SVG-like assets uh, over API, which is uh, something that could be super valuable for a number of us here, right? So Shapeshifter. Uh, Shapeshifter is a really nice tool for basically creating animated vector drawables. Um, it also outputs for uh, iOS and web through CSS uh, vector assets. It does have its own learning curve, but it doesn't require any code experience. So if you actually have a project manager who's a little bit interested or a uh, lead designer who's interested in kind of handling some of that, this is a great tool to just kind of schluff off to them. I mean, you can learn it. You, it's nice that you, know, you kind of help them get, get accustomed to it, but uh, it's also really nice to not have to do it. And uh, there's a video here on actually uh, how to actually do it, it's really, it's really short. It's really great. <laughs> so now I want to get into code. Uh, you can follow along with me. Uh, this is the website. And there's a reason why I have the number five there, and I'll show you here. 
So, on my application, actually, it's probably a little bit better if I show you first. So, this is my actual application running on a Nexus 5X, I, I believe. Uh, so, we actually have five kind of major animation styles. Uh, truthfully, there's uh, a total of like nine or ten if you get really, really deep into it, uh, using Canvas and object animators through XML definitions. But we're just going to cover five basic types here, which are just XML definitions of animations, uh, the dot animate or view property animator, uh, standard animation types, object animator, which is actually a subset of value animator, and prop values holder, which actually just is a uh, control thing for object animator. Uh, some other ones uh, that I won't necessarily be showing because they're kind of covered by this are actually uh, object animator definitions through XML and prop values holder definitions for keyframes for uh, object animator. I have never used those <laughs> uh, other than for my own projects and you probably wouldn't either. Is it, That's kind of why we're not gonna cover it. Uh, and then I throw in a little bonus, bonus one down here uh, for text color, which is a little bit of a hard example to try and find online. So what are we actually doing for the animations here? So you see there's this lovely uh, frame indicator up here. And what we're doing is animating a fab. Oh, I think it, nope, the uh, actual emulator stopped. <laughs> uh, give me a second. Yeah, we'll just start with this one then. Oh no, okay, apparently that died. Uh, so, let's just go over the code then. So, for what we're actually doing here, uh, you can see in the code, I've just got some button definitions and all they're doing is kind of just a simple selector for different modes. But the main thing to take into over here is Animate Fab XML. So what we have here is we have a animation that we defined in XML and we actually declared kind of up here at the top. And that animation is in this. So if we look at Fab Open and Fab Close, So what we're declaring here is we want to have a scale animation, so X and Y, and we want it to start from zero, we want it to scale to 0.8, and we have a linear interpolator on that scale, and then we also have an alpha animation which has an acceleration uh, type of interpolator, so it's going to go a little bit whoosh, whooshy. Uh, so there's a reason why I chose these types. So when it comes to uh, animations, these are the two that are considered generally the most expensive. Uh, so in this case, uh, alpha is always going to run as a software interpolated animation. So you don't get any of the advantages of hardware, which is kind of sad. Uh, when, it comes, when it comes to scaling, scaling objects actually, to get it to be smooth, it actually has to do calculations on multiple dimensions and it has to like redraw stuff each time. It's a fairly expensive animation. And then also because we're not going to absolute full scale, uh, you're going to see some of the weirdness that is actually involved with some of these animations that actually they don't all act the same or act like what you expect. Oh, okay, come on. So you can see this is the fab open and fab close is just the opposite of that. Uh, let's see if we can get that emulator working again. Otherwise. 
nonsense. We are going to kill. So, let's see. Alright. This is not burning, burning, burning. Oh, that's not running the current version. Fun times. Uh, let's just run that. Dismiss. Sorry. It's always lovely when you have technical issues, right? <laughs> Demo gods. I did not pray hard enough, apparently. Uh, so, <laughs> so you can actually see what ours looks like. So we have the uh, animate type, and this is actually what it's doing, is it's actually causing uh, a little fab animation that to be generated. You can see it's kind of nice. It gets a little, little bit of a fady fun thing going on here. Um, and we have just a couple of other things that can happen. You just go through the selector and they should all be acting relatively the same. Uh, it kind of resets it each time that you actually select a new one. So uh, you see examples of the exact same animation through multiple methods. So what do some of those methods actually look like? So we've already gone through the animate fab XML style, right? So really simple, really short amount of code. You really don't have to do that much to get it uh, going. You just do your declare on the XML file and then you just do start animation. But I actually need to set this up here and it's because of a, a weird thing that this does that not all of them do. Uh, <laughs> they will actually end up resizing and holding information about that scale factor. So when I say 0.8, all of them say that I'm going to animate to 0.8. Some of them will actually hold it at 0.8, uh, the view for you, at the end of the animation. That's what this one does. And some of them don't. And so this can actually be something that would be really, really infuriating for anybody who's actually writing uh, to go, like, why does it just all of a sudden jump to like a larger size than what I animated it to at the very end? And it doesn't do that using a different method, but you had to convert it. It, it will absolutely destroy you in some ways. But you kind of get the idea here, open and close. Um, the thing is, is also XML acts a little bit funny in terms of performance. So the reason why I have that actual uh, frame indicator on the program is so that you can actually test this out on multiple devices and you can see the same animation multiple ways and different performance factors for all of them. So XML definitions, Think about this, it has to parse it, it has to send it to something, and versus you actually just declaring it programmatically, it has to create multiple objects in order to act. Generally speaking, it's usually the worst performance option, but it is the easiest, and that is the trade-off. So the next type is actually just using view property animator. So as you can see, this is probably almost like the second shortest code. So as we go through it, you're gonna see that the code actually gets longer. So here we just have, you just say dot animate, and then I say, okay, I want it to scale X, I want it to scale Y, I will give it a duration, I set the interpolator, and then I have a with end action. Oh, nope, that, we, what did you do? Okay, so we say a with end action, that we want to say that the visibility is gone at the end. Okay, I'm just gonna hold this because it does not want to stay on my ear. So at the end, now then we just do the same thing with the alpha, we set the interpolator, we hit start, and you can see that actually using this, the performance is a little bit better. It's a little bit more consistent. So let's kind of go towards stuff that you probably are a little bit more familiar with, 
And that's just the standard animation package. So what's nice here is I can actually just declare that scale animation once at the top, the alpha animation once, and I can actually make it work for both. So by using an animation set at the bottom, you can actually see here that what I also need to do is make sure that they are not sharing interpolators. Now, what's good here is I can declare it once, use it twice, right? So I just set it on both. And then kind of get to really the stuff that you should be using. Uh, I'm a big believer in object animator and value animator just in general because they are the only things that work consistently. It is the equivalent of writing, uh, I don't know how many of you have written assembly code, uh, but <laughs> object animator compared to the other options is kind of like the assembly code version of animations. Everything's gonna be long form, it's kinda gonna suck, you're gonna have to remember uh, weird names for <laughs> like what thing I actually want uh, to be animated and the property type. Uh, so there's scale, rotation, alpha, uh, a whole bunch of other ones, including like transformation and rotate versus is different than rotation, which I'll actually show you an example of in a moment. But here, what we do is we individually have to set it for both X, scale X and scale Y. There is no just scale um, because it has to. It actually has to generate that on both sides anyway. And then we go to the alpha. We set our durations, we have to do it for all three things. We have to do both of them individually between the two different fabs because you're animating the objects much more individually. Again, this is long form code. Now when we get to kind of the last example, which actually has the same performance as standard object animator because it, guess what? It is object animator. The only difference here is that we actually create a property value holder that is actually gonna hold what those animations are going to be on that animator. The advantages are that in this case, we only have to declare two actual object animators. We only have to declare the property value holder once, so we don't have to individually declare it. So we're using less object animator uh, instances in order to accomplish the exact same task. And when we come we actually have to put our listeners in against the object animator. And we are using animator set to actually play them together. So this is where it's a little bit different between object animator and animation, and object animators and regular animations. Regular animations, you have to use animation set. Object animators, you use animator set. Animator set has a lot more flexibility in terms of what you can actually do for playing things together and kind of merging them apart and, uh, and sequencing. Uh, so animation set, you just declare it once and uh, you kind of need to do all your work as far as that goes in the actual animations. You, just, you get a lot more flexibility with animators. And that's kind of the standard ones that I want you guys to know for this. Uh, again, it's a short presentation, so I highly suggest you actually go to this code and start playing with it. But I want to show you another little gotcha here. Uh, so let's go up to here. So I want to show you the fab one, fab two thing here. So I put a little bit of an animation on the two objects. that I show right here, these two. So when we actually look at the code, I don't know why it resets each other. These two things look like they should be doing the exact same thing to those individual objects, correct? Yeah, you know, somebody say yes, no. Okay, so Using value property animator, you would think, using property, view property animations, you would think that the top one would just do a spinning move, right? And we're gonna rotate it 360 degrees, we're gonna set a duration for it, uh, we want it to kind of rotate and then slow down at the end, so we wanna give it a decelerate interpolator. And uh, we're basically doing the same thing using animation, 
in the other fab button that we've created. Or at least you'd think so, right? Well, here's the thing. They don't. <laughs> so if you can see here, uh, this one actually goes and makes a circle versus this one which actually spins the icon in a circle and spins the object in a circle. So this is where things can get kind of tricky. There's a lot of weird stuff that can actually happen and that you will see. And I also explicitly set things so that uh, I'm starting from the top each time because of uh, some of the odd behaviors that some of these do in terms of setting heights and showing you through the listeners what's actually going on there. So this is uh, a really nice way for you guys to get a lot of uh, code very quickly and be able to parse through it and understand uh, different animation standard types that you should be using. And then, woohoo! If you want to grab the slides, uh, or get in contact with me. Here's my information, and I think we're done. Woohoo!